My entire career has been about building B2B SaaS products. Today, I'm actually scaling two B2B SaaS companies. I'm also coaching hundreds of B2B SaaS founders on how to grow their companies with a differentiated go-to-market strategy. Amidst all of this and doing this YouTube channel and sharing my journey, I decided to go on a little side quest. What I wanted to do was challenge myself in building a micro SaaS product. And not only a micro SaaS product, but a B2C micro SaaS product. And fast forward to today, it has amassed a whopping $200 of MRR. I figured out what my product idea was and we've gotten it to initial revenues and I've made a ton of mistakes because let's be honest, I've never really built a proper micro SaaS product and I have zero experience in actually building B2C products. So in this episode, I'm gonna walk you through the five hard learned lessons that I've learned in building out this product. And I'll go deep into exactly what I learned how it's different from traditional SaaS and micro SaaS, and also what are the different nuances between B2B SaaS and B2C SaaS. And when you watch till the end of this episode, it is my hope that you learn some of these battle-hardened lessons that I've had to learn the hard way. And also you get inspired to maybe build your own micro SaaS product and generate revenues. Intro. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Unstoppable. I'm TK, and on this channel, I help SaaS founders like you grow your SaaS businesses faster with an unstoppable strategy. Now, if you're new to this channel, welcome. I drop an episode every single Sunday from the trenches on how to grow your SaaS business faster. So if you're new, be sure to hit that subscribe button and that bell icon. That way you'll get notified every single time I drop an episode with the TK Energy. Now, if you're already part of this community, if you're part of my SaaS go-to-market coaching programs, if you're a customer of one of my SaaS products, my people, welcome back. It's really awesome to see you over here. So this episode is going to be a little bit of an in-depth episode because we've gotten so many new subscribers lately. We've gotten so many new clients in my go-to-market programs. And I've gotten the question of TK, what do you do with your time? How do you coach this many founders? How do you scale companies? So I wanted to give you a little backdrop of how I actually spend my time and some of the side quests that I've been doing in addition to coaching so that I can stay sharp in what I do in actually coaching B2B SaaS founders. So first of all, the backdrop on me is I started a company called ToutApp. It was one of the first sales engagement platforms. We grew that company. We raced on our likes of Andreessen Horowitz, Jackson Square Ventures, and prominent angel investors. We grew that company to a point where where we sold it to a market leader called Marketo. Marketo was a leader in the marketing automation space. We were one of the leaders in the sales engagement space and we joined that company. I joined their executive team. We did a two-year turnaround and then we sold Marketo to Adobe for $4.75 billion. After that, I thought I was done, but I wasn't really done. So I started a YouTube channel sharing everything that I learned on how to grow SaaS companies because enough things went right, enough things went wrong for me to really learn all the nuances of scaling SaaS companies. And fast forward to today, we are now at around 73,000 subscribers on this channel by the time I'm recording this. I run a SaaS go-to-market coaching program where I work one-on-one -on -one with founders that are applying all the principles that I teach in this channel step-by-step. -step, and I actually coach them on implementing everything. And on top of that, I'm scaling two go-to-market SaaS companies. One is Instant, and Instant helps you generate leads with content marketing. And the other is Megaphone and Megaphone helps you pulse check your customers, see if they're happy, and if they're happy, it helps you get referrals. Either way, Unstoppable helps you get more pipeline, Instant helps you get more pipeline, and Megaphone helps you get more pipeline. And in case you're keeping score, ToutApp also helps you get more pipeline. I've always been about B2B pipeline, and that's all the products and services that I create. And basically, 90% of my time goes towards coaching founders in my go-to-market program, and 10% of my time goes towards either this YouTube channel or side quests. Side quests are things that I do to keep challenging myself. For example, this is me deadlifting 335 pounds and going on a side quest to get into the best shape of my life. At the same time, I also wanted to make sure that I'm from the trenches and I was still building SaaS companies and applying the principles that I teach and I coach on and that I talk about on this channel, which is why I started up the side quest of Instant and Megaphone because those ideas came to me as I was coaching this many founders and I was like, I gotta do this. So we started scaling those companies. But in addition to that, there was something that kept bugging me. It kept bugging me about the fact that I know B2B, 
and I know SaaS, but I really want to hone in on micro SaaS. Truth be told, I've always wanted to have a micro SaaS product, but every single company I started, started off wanting to be a micro SaaS, but turned into a bigger idea and we really started to scale them. So this time around, I really wanted to build a micro SaaS product. And on top of that, I wanted to build something that was B2C for consumers, not just for businesses. And that's where I started off on this side quest on and off over the last few years on building out a product called Sunday. If you're curious about what Sunday is, I'll dig more into it as I use that as an example of the lessons that I've learned in building out this micro SaaS product. Anyway, I got in touch with my co-founder at one of my companies and said we should try building something and we were getting our feet wet on developing the idea for Megaphone and this was one of the first products we built together to get back into coding and really get into top shape. We built it out in Rails, we built it out on React, React was the front end, Rails is the back end. And anyway, it got our feet wet in really building a simple product and putting it out there. Fast forward, it's generating about $200 in MRR. We don't spend much time on it. But lately, I've been going back on that side quest because I hated taking an L on it. I'm like, look, $200 is cool, but I think this could be bigger. But I need to look at it through the right lens of this is a micro SaaS product. And it's not a B2B product. It's a B2C product. So we may have to market it differently. And therein comes all the lessons that I've learned in the twists and turns on the road. So in this episode, with that huge backdrop, hopefully it's okay. I gave you the backstory. I wanted to go a little bit more in depth here for all the subscribers that we have in this channel to show you basically how my life works and when I work on these things. And I, yes, I do sleep. I wanted to get into all the lessons that I've learned. So if you want to dig into lesson number one, go ahead and smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm and let's dig right into it. So lesson number one in building out this micro SaaS product was to get hyper-focused on one outcome. The B2B SaaS platform guy in me was thinking about transformations. Like, hey, we want to sell into this company and we want to transform the way you do something. And truth be told, when I was developing Sunday and the go-to-market strategy for it, and I was experimenting with it, that's the part of my brain that kept turning on. But in reality, the conversion rates were a lot higher when I just focused on one thing the one outcome that we've promised and focused on, as soon as we did that, the conversion rate started to get better. So in this case, if you're wondering what Sunday is, you can check out unstoppablesunday.com. Here's a screenshot of it. It really just does one thing. It helps you plan your week. There's a very specific way I like to plan my week. It takes about 15 minutes and I baked it into this software. So it's part journaling app, it's part guided video. And as the video is playing, it's helping you journal on planning your week. It takes 15 minutes, it's super easy, and it helps you actually go into Monday with certainty. That's basically the one outcome. Now, over time, the B2B brain in me and the transformation brain in me started thinking, well, let's add the feature so they log in daily, so we added a Pomodoro timer. Let's make it with pause monthly, so we added that. Let's add more resources. And the thing was, the more I added, the less it became a micro SaaS and the more confused people got. So the biggest lesson I learned the hard way was you have to focus on one outcome. And that's what you should focus on in the actual sales page, the landing page, the emails, the manifesto, and anything else that you're doing to promote the product. Now, here's lesson number two. The lesson number two that I learned was in the value proposition. The value proposition is this one to two sentences that you use to actually communicate what your product does. It is one of the most important things to develop. It's one of the hardest things to develop. In fact, the more you are in the code and building the features I've learned, the harder it is to take a step back, think in terms of the customer and define your value proposition. I knew that was hard because I work with founders on their value proposition day in and day out in my go-to-market program. But what I didn't anticipate was the fact that value propositions are different between a B2B product and a B2C product. When you are selling a B2B product, the reason people buy is it's a business decision and it's almost always some sort of an ROI. It's going to be delivering more growth, it's going to be reducing risk, or maybe it's going to be saving money. But feelings aren't really attached to that buying decision. It still has to make dollars and cents. Get that? Dollars and cents. It needs to make sense. On the B2C side, and this is something I learned the hard way as I was experimenting, you have to talk about emotion. 
and feelings. So one of the things that I tried with value propositions for Sunday was, hey, unlock your best goals or accomplish your wildest goals. But the thing that converted a lot better was when I started to talk about feeling peace and feeling certainty and having a plan. Those are things that people resonated with. It was more emotions. B2C is more of an emotional decision and an emotional purchase, whereas B2B has more logic involved. And as I was going through the marketing of this and the go-to-market of this, and I was iterating over the years, I kept banging my head. I'm like, I don't understand. This is a really strong value proposition. But what I didn't realize was when people are looking at it through a personal lens, through a B2C lens, they're really deciding on emotions, on how they feel. Now, in business purchases, emotions are still involved because that's just how humans operate. But at the same time, when it comes to purchasing or spending more of their time, the logic brain comes on on the B2B side, whereas on the B2C side, the emotional brain comes on. And that was one of my hard-earned lessons. Nowadays, we talk more about here's how you're going to feel when you use this product. You're going to feel certainty. You're going to feel clarity. You're going to go into Monday with a plan. Those are all feelings. They're not tangible dollar ROI impacts. And those are the things that have started to convert more for Sunday as I got back into the game to make this side quest work. Lesson number three was to have a tight core product loop. This took a little bit of time because again, the business B2B brain in me was thinking about how do I make this a platform? How do I make it where people are logging into it every single day and they're addicted to it and it's taking over more of their workflow? Those are traditional things you have to think about when you're thinking about your B2B SaaS product. Your B2B SaaS product really needs to go in and take over a major chunk of the workflow. And so naturally with that brain coming on, not really understanding that I was really creating a B2C product and I have to talk about emotions. I was thinking, okay, if they're planning their week, then what we want to do is make sure they execute every single day. So we added a daily tab. What we want them to do is pause and reflect every single month. What we want them to do is plan out their whole year. It started to get bigger and bigger. And quite honestly, this was a side quest. I was using this to have fun. So we kept adding more features, myself and my co-founder, to start thinking about, well, how do we make this a full platform that people live? In. And that was the wrong call, totally. Ultimately, when we looked at the data, there was one core product loop that worked. The core product loop that worked was to create a weekly plan. And the next part of the core product loop was to email them on Wednesday, reminding them what their plan for the week is and to just make sure we stay present and then send them one more email on Sunday to tell them to plan again. So they would make a plan, they would get reminded about their plan on Wednesday, we would send another reminder on Sunday to get them back into making the next plan for the following week. What that did was create a loop of people getting hooked on the product. It wasn't daily use case. It wasn't taking over their entire lives and how they manage their productivity, but it just created this one habit that they did over and over and felt good about. I'll tell you right now, this completely rocked my brain as a B2B founder, because as a B2B founder, you want a daily use case. You want to take over more parts of the workflow. You want to get fully integrated. But as a B2C founder, they really just want to get the emotion that they're looking for and then move on. And that's perfectly fine. And as soon as we started to embrace that, we started to see more people just created their weekly plan. They saw the email on Wednesday, so we stayed top of mind like, oh, that's cool, I made this plan, I should course correct. And then on Sunday, they would come back in and create that weekly plan again, and it created a loop. So if you're building a micro SaaS product, and even a SaaS product, this is true, if you're in the early stages, you really wanna figure out what the tight core product loop is. It's usually this one feature that they use over and over, even if it's spanned out over the course of a week. So those were the first three lessons. I have two more. The fifth one really kicked me. Before I go into that, let me pause here for a second. Are you starting to see the power in this? There's a distinct difference between how you think about micro SaaS products and SaaS products. There's a distinct difference on how you think about going to market for a B2B product and a B2C product. And trust me, this was humbling for me because as the B2B guy going on this side quest of saying, cool, not a platform company, not a B2B company, but a B2C company that's a micro SaaS, it's just one tool, the whole thing has just been super humbling for me. But I'm glad I'm doing this side quest because the reason I do these YouTube videos, the reason I create companies like Instant and Megaphone and even Sunday is because it keeps me sharp. This is something I love to do. And that way, by the time I go back to working with founders and coaching them, it makes me more empathetic. They respect me more because it's not just some guru guy that's just maybe did it once and can't do it again. I'm literally in the trenches and it allows me to be, me to be a better coach. And also, 
this is how I study the game and I just want to be one of the best in the game and that's why I keep doing this and that's why other people want to work with me. So if you're starting to see the power in this, if you're getting value from this, can I just get a yes in the comments below? And also smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. It just loves it when you do that. Also, if you want to plan your week and you want to use Sunday, just go to unstoppablesunday.com. You don't have to go anywhere right now. I'll link to it below. Let's go to lesson number four. This was really hard earned. Lesson number four is in this journey, especially in the scope of building a micro SaaS product, in the scope of building a B2C type of product, in the scope of saying like, look, we just want this to make money and run on its own and doesn't need to be a world domination. There were some things that I was hardwired for that I had to unlearn in this particular side quest. The first one was tech stack. Now, I have worked on this product with my co-founder. He doesn't really focus on it anymore. He's 100% focused on Megaphone now. Uh, we've worked on this for years, on and off. And we kept it running and I keep going back in when I have some time and I wanna play around with it. And so at this point, it's running on like a Rails 6 tech stack and it's got React baked in. And there was a part of me as I was iterating and getting back into this side quest where I'm like, oh, let me upgrade everything. I swear I lost like 48 hours on trying to move this thing, updating the gems and moving it from Webpacker to JS bundling and ES script. And turns out none of that mattered. That was a huge waste of time. It, mainly because until you are truly hitting some sort of scale, whatever tech stack you're on is probably fine unless there's some sort of major security vulnerability that you have to worry about. And so that was kind of a humbling experience. At one point I hit it where I'm like, I lost 48 hours trying to get this to work and it's not working still. So let's just not worry about it. Let's just work within whatever we're working within and let's get this working. Let's get the go-to-market working. And if there's more users, if there's like a thousand users, I can go hire someone to fix all these things and upgrade these things. And even my co-founder told me, he's like, look, I don't know why you're wasting time on that. If you want to play around with it, play around with it. And if it starts to take off beyond the $200 a month, which is awesome, like really awesome, but if it really hits some real numbers, all we can do is just start a brand new Rails 8 app, just move over the models, move over the React app, and boom, you're good. Like that's the easiest way to do it instead of trying to migrate all this stuff because it's such a simple application. So that was a lesson learned. Like don't let the tech stack get in the way. It really doesn't matter until you hit some sort of scale. Similarly, as we were building this, we realized, you know, we don't need to build this for scale. We don't need infrastructure that's infinitely scalable. So this was one of the things that thankfully we made a decision on and it held true, but there was an inclination in me. I'm like, oh, maybe we need to move it to a different infrastructure. But really we host this on a very easy to host to host. We just push to Git repo and it gets published and it can scale. It's not the perfect infrastructure, but that's fine. And that's particularly true in the early stages for any SaaS company, but even more true for micro SaaS because these aren't designed for millions of users. Like you just wanted to get it going. And if it's going, then you can always strengthen it and add in the scale. And that was a lesson reminded and something I could have wasted time on, but thankfully we didn't because of my co-founder. And then the last one was there were certain things in there that were just slow to iterate on. So one of the biggest things that I found myself iterating on was not the application, but the sales page. And so we had hard built the sales page. And one of the biggest things that I did was I separated out the sales page from the actual application. And that way it was in a separate repo and I could just tweak on it. I could run AB tests on it. I could set up mixed panel, which I use for instrumenting things, which I'll tell you about in the next principle and the lesson learned. And separating that made it super easy because very quickly I was able to iterate and look at the metrics without messing with the app, without having any downtime or waiting for things to push or build or any of those things. So optimizing certain things for fast iterations is super powerful. And in the beginning, the slow iterations were a time waster. We were just wasting time on things and making things scale like that just didn't matter. And eventually we caught on and unlearned that and that worked out really well for us. Okay, finally, lesson number five, micro SaaS companies are inherently product led. No one's gonna pay like $100,000 for a micro SaaS tool. They're just not. So it has to be like nine bucks a month, 29 bucks a month, maybe even $49 a month. It's probably hard to justify something higher than that. And so we priced Unstoppable Sunday at 29 bucks a month, basically a dollar a day to really feel certainty as you go in every Monday and have a plan for your week and be able to express gratitude. We price it at 29 bucks a month. One of the biggest reasons we price it at 29 bucks a month with a 30 day free trial is like, look, we want people to get hooked. We want them to pay, we want them to have skin in the game, but also we really want to make sure there's excess cash if this thing starts to work so we can spend it on ads. It, whereas if it was priced at like nine bucks a month, we would never be able to scale with ads. And that was one of the go-to-market decisions that I made. 
So in part of all of this, we made the micro SaaS product led, which means you sign up on its own. We want to make sure you're successful in the trial and you convert to revenue. So we instrumented the product led flywheel. And the product web flywheel, I've done videos on this before, is where you first measure acquisition, how many people are starting the trial. Then you measure how many people are taking significant action in the product, that's activation. Then you look at how many people are converting to revenue, how many people are staying in terms of retention, and how many people are referring. And the biggest thing that I did is I instrumented this entire flywheel inside of Mixpanel. I looked at, okay, how many people are first time visitors out of those percentage? How many people are signing up for a trial out of that percentage? How many people are taking significant action in the product out of that? How many people are actually coming back and out of that, how many people are converting to revenue and what that allowed us to do. And this is where this side quest gets really exciting. I'm basically looking at these metrics, this flywheel every single week and saying, okay, what's the one experiment that I can run and what's the one percentage I want to increase. So I can go in and choose what part of the side quest I want to do. Do I want to increase the retention and getting people to come back or do I want to focus on activation or do I just want to stay focused on how do I get more people to sign up? And quite honestly, right now in this side quest, my biggest area of focus has been around how do I get more people to sign up? Because by the time people sign up and get into it, they're okay. Like they do well enough where it's like, it gets a $200 MRR and it's like, it's fine. What we're really more interested in now that I'm looking at it through this B2C lens and this emotion value prop is how do we just get more people to sign up so that we can get more data flowing. And once we know we can get more people to sign up, then we can start to think about how do we retain them and activate them. I use the app myself every single week and I love the email notifications every single Wednesday where it reminds me of my goals for the week. So I love it. Okay. So those are the hard lessons learned. Let's recap really quick. Number one, uh, when you're building a micro SaaS product, you want to be hyper focused on one outcome. Unlike traditional SaaS, where it's about transformations, you want to just say like, we just do this and that's all we do. And you want to be proud of it. Number two, you want to craft your value proposition. The value proposition is probably the most important thing to craft where you go to market strategy. But remember if it's B2B, it's very ROI driven. If it's B2C, it's a lot more about feelings. Number three is you want to have a tight, core product loop, especially for micro SaaS businesses. It's very easy to keep adding more features, but think about the one feature that matters the most, the one outcome, and think about what's the loop the user has to go through. For Sunday, it's, hey, you want to create a weekly plan? You make the weekly plan. And then you remind them on Wednesday to say, hey, this is your weekly plan. And then on Sunday, you remind them again to do the plan again. And that's essentially how it comes together. So you want to make sure you do it the right way. I think that got blurry, so I'm going to do that again. So number three is you want to make sure you have a tight core product loop. So if for micro SaaS particularly, you want to have this one feature that they use over and over and they get addicted to. And to drive that usage, you want to have a loop. So in the case of Sunday, I realize you want to make a Sunday plan. Once you make a Sunday plan, I want to send a Wednesday reminder. Once I send a Wednesday reminder, it's top of mind. And then I send a Sunday reminder again to make the plan again. And that creates this loop. And that's what you want for your users. And every product has its own core product loop. Number four, you want to avoid time wasters, especially for micro SaaS and the early stages. Don't worry too much about tech stack. Don't worry about scaling to a million users or having the perfect infrastructure and set it all up so you can iterate quickly. So a great way to do that is separate the landing page and the sales page from the actual application so that we can iterate on that quickly and get more users flowing in. And lastly, especially if it's micro SaaS, you should have a product led model. Make sure you have the right flywheel and instrument it from acquisition, activation, revenue, retention, and referral. And sometimes depending on what your model is, if you're paying up front, then it's revenue. But if it's a 30 day trial, like it is with Sunday, you can swap the two where if you don't retain them, they'll never convert to revenue. So you have to get, keep them coming back. So you can swap these two, depending on how you have it structured. So those are my hard lessons learned in this side quest. I will keep doing this with my spare time. I'm shocked that I have spare time, but somehow I do because I'm so intentional about how I spend my time. If you got value from this video, please smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. If you're in this stage where you're looking to grow your SaaS product, whether it's a B2B product or a B2C product, or you are uh, a micro SaaS or a traditional SaaS platform or an AI platform, then you should grab a copy of my five point SaaS growth strategy guide. My five point SaaS growth strategy guide is completely free. 
And it goes into more detail about the key principles that I use to grow SaaS products. My experience is primarily in B2B SaaS. That's all the founders that I coach in my go-to-market program. But I'm now honing in on my skill set on B2C and micro SaaS so that I can be a better coach to all of you. And as always, I'll come back here on this YouTube channel and share my learnings as I do these different side quests. And as I also learn from founders that are scaling as well so that you get value from it. So if you got value from this, smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. If you want to grab a copy of that five point SaaS growth strategy guide, just go to getunstoppable.com slash strategy. Getunstoppable.com slash strategy. And I'll link to it below as well. So that's easy for you to click on along with the link for Sunday. Also, if you got value from this, I drop an episode like this on how to grow your SaaS business, on lessons learned in growing SaaS companies, on these different side quests that I'm doing every single Sunday with actionable strategies and tactics from the trenches. The reason I say the trenches is because I'm not just coaching, I'm also doing this and that way I can be a better coach. This is my fifth year of coaching in the go-to-market program. And quite honestly, the students that I have in the program, the founders that have gone through the program are more successful than some of the coaches that are out there claiming to be experts in SaaS. The reason I do this is so that I can really be one of the best and serve you at the highest and greatest level. So uh, be sure to hit that subscribe button and that bell icon if you haven't already. Uh, so that you're notified every single time I drop an episode from the trenches. Also, if you are a subscriber, I really want to thank you. Our subscriber base has been growing. We have one of the highest quality subscriber bases. I'm really grateful for your subscription and for you to watch these videos. If you have a fellow founder, a potential founder, a team member that would get value from this video, please share this with them. It will mean the world to us. We put a lot of love into these videos. And lastly, remember, everyone needs a strategy for their life and their business. When you are with us, yours is going to be unstoppable. I'm TK. And I'll see you in the next episode inside the five point SaaS growth strategy guide. Take care, everybody.